from New York City to discuss this issue, Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz. Professor, we thank you very much for your time. And as we understand it, Alan, the Anti-Defamation League voicing deep concern over Saudi Arabia's denial of a request from the Obama administration for a visa to be issued to Michael Wilner. He's an American reporter working for the Jerusalem Post. Bottom line, uh -huh. Alan, was he denied these credentials because he's Jewish? Well, you have to go back some years in Saudi history. Uh, for many, many years, Saudi simply wouldn't allow any Jew, whether he was a French citizen, American citizen, German citizen, to enter into Israel. It was a violation of their religious law to allow a heathen Jew to uh, set foot on Saudi Arabia. About 25 years ago, Harvard established a program to help Saudi Arabia build a medical school, and you needed to have a certification that you were not Jewish in order to work there as a doctor, and absurdly, Harvard's minister was giving out these certifications of Christianity, and I went over to him and I said, you're not giving out certifications of Christianity, you're giving out certifications of non jewianity and he stopped doing it, and the program crumbled. So Saudi Arabia has a long, horrible history of bigotry when it comes to Jews, and uh, if, if this guy were not Jewish, uh, clearly he would have gotten uh, the visa, of course, the fact that he is the correspondent for the Jerusalem Post, which is an Israeli newspaper, may have been a contributing factor as well. Alan, should the president have canceled his trip based on this? Yes, he should. The president should refuse to set foot in Saudi Arabia until and unless the uh, country allows uh, a correspondent to, to go there. And, and, and they would back down. The Saudis would back down. Uh, and uh, the president should show that kind of determination, and uh, I, I believe that he's, he's making a mistake in simply saying that he's disappointed. And why won't he do that, Professor, considering you're so certain that the Saudis would back down? I mean, it seems like an obvious step here, and, and, and one that the, pre that the president would make politically and uh, earn him a lot of support when he needs it so desperately right now. I would think so. And, uh, you know, look, Saudi Arabia is a very important ally, not because of uh, who they are, but what they're on top of. I mean, it's not really a country. It's a wholly owned family gas station that supplies much of the, uh, you know, oil resources for the Western world. So they're a very important ally, and they do have, uh, you know, they're an apartheid country. They, they, they have gender apartheid. Men and women have to be kept separate. They have religious apartheid. They have roads that are for um, Muslims only. Um, by the way, you hear the myth sometimes that Israel has roads for Jews only. Not true. There's no such road in all of Israel. There are roads for Israelis only, and of course, that's understandable in light of the terrorism. But Saudi Arabia has roads for Muslims only. They are very anti-Christian. You're not allowed to build Christian churches. You can't have a cross showing it for an American military uh, soldier. Um, and we just can't accept their, their, their uh, approach to discrimination if they're going to be American allies. And the, and the United States has to be just tougher when it comes to that. Professor, before we leave this topic, I want to make sure I understand. The statement from the ADL, obviously you're coming out and going public with your concerns about this. Do you know if anyone officially contacted the White House to talk about this? And uh, have they heard anything back from, from uh, President Obama or the press shop there at the White House? Well, I can tell you, I do know that the White House is putting a lot of pressure on the Saudis to back down. Uh, and they have made public statements, and they've done everything short of canceling the president's uh, visit. Um, and, you know, look, I acknowledge it's a tough question. Does the president cancel a visit? It's a very important visit based on one journalist. My view is that he should. I can understand reasonable people taking the other view, but they are doing whatever they can uh, to stop the short of the president backing down from his visit. Well, Professor, we've been covering this issue. Uh, we saw the video there on the screen here of the Arab League meeting uh, this week. You know, coming out of that was a statement from the Saudis uh, rejecting the Jewish straight and, and going a step further, calling for the two-state solution with a Palestinian capital uh, in Jerusalem. I mean, we're mm -hmm. also looking at John Kerry still holding these meetings with Mahmoud Abbas. But does that really show, when you hear those comments, you know, a, a Palestinian state with a capital in Jerusalem, how far apart we are from any kind of resolution to this conflict? No, I, I don't think so, actually. Um, uh, I think many Israelis would be willing to accept the Palestinian state with some kind of a shared capital, uh, Palestinian capital in East Jerusalem. That would only be symbolic. We know that the real capital 
of any Palestinian state would be Ramallah. Ramallah is a beautiful city. I've been there. I've met with all the Palestinian leaders. Look, the problem is not that the Arab League says that Israel shouldn't be recognized as the nation state of the Jewish people. By the way, it's not the Jewish state, as if the state is Jewish religiously. It's the nation state of the Jewish people. That's the formulation that Prime Minister um, Netanyahu has frequently used. And now we have uh, an organization in America that claims to be pro-Israel called J Street, which is not at all pro-Israel, which uh, uh, adopts the Palestinian view on this and says essentially that uh, the Palestinians should not recognize Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people. So, you know, there are divisions uh, even w within the what's called the pro-Israel community. I don't believe J Street is pro-Israel, but J Street is undercutting Israel's position. The United States' position is that the Palestinians should recognize Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people, but that failure to do so should not end the talks. That's a, a reasonable position. Well, I appreciate the fact, uh, Professor, uh, obviously uh, gifted in the law and well-schooled as you are, the notion of what you deem to be reasonable. However, this intransigence, it appears, from the Arab League and, and so many of the states that are Israel's neighbors, this failure to recognize Israel, how can that ever be overcome and really move forward meaningfully with the peace process? It's very hard. Look, let's remember the Arab League after 67, when Israel was attacked and invaded and won the war, and Israel was prepared to accept the two-state solution and give back all the territories, all the territories, in exchange simply for peace. The Arab League went to Khartoum and announced their three, three famous no's, no peace, no negotiation, no recognition. And I think uh, those three no's are still predominant in the Arab and Muslim uh, world. Uh, certainly Iran, which is Israel's greatest enemy, doesn't even recognize Israel's right to exist. Forget about it as a nation state of the Jewish people. Uh, some other states have recognized Israel's right to exist, including the Palestinians, but they can't say the words as the nation state of the Jewish people. I remember meeting with Abbas and just saying, say after me, nation state of the Jewish people. Won't that be a step forward? And he says, well, it's up to Israel to declare what it is. We don't have to recognize it. Of course, the Palestinian constitution calls for Palestine to be a Muslim state of Palestine without even equal rights for Christians and Jews. Israel, of course, has equal rights for Christians and Jews, but it is the nation state of the Jewish people, just the way France is the nation state of the French people and England the nation state of the English people. Being a nation state of the Jewish people is not a religious phenomenon. Uh, being Jewish is a civilization, a culture, a history. And uh, everybody has to recognize that Israel is the only state in the world that is the nation state of the Jewish people. That's a historical fact, and the Palestinians should recognize that. Professor Alan Dershowitz, we thank you for your insights as always. We look forward to your next visit. John, when you hear this, when it comes down to just the simple notion of recognition and a lack of recognition, I don't see how the peace process moves forward. But they continue to work on it. It is a worthy cause to work on. But again, it feels like we are just so far apart when you hear those types of statements coming out of the air. Much more to come here on America's Forum. We'll be back. You can always reach out to us on social media. Our contact info is here on the screen, and we want to hear from you.